Hello and welcome to my vlog. I'm Alicia Dreams and today I'm doing a recap of, well, it's kind of a recap and it's kind of some commentary on what happened in the second episode of Boba, the book of Boba Fett. And um, let's get right to it. Let's like uh, my first video in this recap series um, did really well. I have like 108 views, which is a lot for me. <laughs> I still I'm still a little channel, but uh, I wanted to address something that came up on the uh, Star Wars fandom hates people of color block. I didn't answer this particular um, anonymous message that we got, but um, let me just put it up on the screen. Okay, so I'm gonna read it, and it says I'm in the non it says I'm watching the Book of Boba Fett, and the way the second episode was played out seemed very mighty whitey. Though I know Tamora is not white to me. A human man getting captured by the cultural other is beaten up by them, saves someone, joins the tribe, and then teaches them to fight the other white human men with a superior technology. And it kind of puts a bad taste in my mouth like the Avatar Last Battle Right movies. Now, this is my co-mod that um, answered this, Mod Lena. But uh, th they said this, uh, okay, I don't want to diminish your feelings or feel like I'm dismissing your opinion. I just want to try to share why I think it's not the same thing at all. Like, Boba literally is descended from a planet which was purged by the Separatists. Just because he's a clone instead of a son and didn't grow up there doesn't mean that's lost. Is anything is he's been orphaned by his heritage twice over. I would have put orphaned instead of lost his heritage, but I'm sorry. I just add a little bit here. And here's the, might, the mighty whitey trope from tvtropes.org. A common trope in the 18th and 19th century adventure fiction, when Europeans were visiting and documenting vast swaths of the world for the first time, Mighty Whitey is usually a displaced white European who ends up living with the native tribes people and not only learns their ways, but also becomes their greatest warrior or leader or representative. Extra points if you lose the chief's daughter along the way. An unfortunately common variation that perpetuates the present into present day media is that she will continue to love our hero even if he is directly responsible for the death of her husband, brother, or father. Like in both Avatar and, well that's the end of the quotation from the Mighty Whitey trope. Like in both Avatar and Last Samurai, the white protagonist did get the extra points by falling in love with the chief's daughter. I don't know, followers, can you please chime in? I don't want to overstep here because Maud Lena is not um... Maori, and so, I mean, at least that's why she said she didn't want to overstep, but here's some interesting commentary that we got. Revenge of the Shit said, these posts don't exactly address this trope specifically, however, these are the voices of the indigenous and Polynesian fans and their opinions on how this episode's storyline was treated, and how Boba's interactions with the Tuscans as well, oh, as well as the overall writing of the storyline was respectful as a whole. Their voices should be the most upheld here. So this is comes. This is a commentary from Mask Knife. Okay, wow, I did not expect this episode to make me as emotional as it has. An indigenous person watching this show, I'm filled with so much excitement and pride to have such an amazing indigenous actor as Tamora to be part of the, a part of in Star Wars. He so openly incorporates Maori culture into Boba, which is, which in a huge franchise like Star Wars is so important, but this episode, chapter two, the indigenous man helping once thought savage people who hide in the desert because of colonial threat and misunderstanding, the man who goes out of his way to show the compassion of these people, show an entire episode literally for showing how m multiple tribes exist and that they are people with vast ancestry, knowledge, and traditions. All ending with that beautiful drum number that made me start to tear up because all I could think of was the drums at the powwow. Oh wait, did I say this person was Maori? I think they're they might just be indigenous, but you know Maori are indigenous to New Zealand. And my, anyways, go back. I'm going back to the post. And my dad playing the flute or dancing together. An episode showing that. 
through kindness and patience that the savage indigenous people of this planet are worthy, beautiful, deep peoples. This episode made me cry and filled my chest with so much happiness. This is really monumental, and I just can't express how much happiness this gives me. I adore this show, and I'm only more excited for what tomorrow will take Bobaton to next. I should have mentioned that this is not a spoiler-free episode. Um, recap. Okay, so this is Milf Dinjarin. The haka, the carving of the stick, totally reminiscent of carving Taiaha, the Pukana, as Bobo learns to wield the stick, the discussions of colonialism and the indigenous rights to ancestral land. I can't believe they pack so much into one episode. This show is going to kill me. I can't believe we're getting so much positive representation for Maori. In such a high-profile show. This one's also by Din Djarin. Oops. Uh, my little structure is falling down. Um, the way I immediately started crying when Boba started talking about how tattooing is the ancestral home of the Tuscans and they have a right to live there in peace. Thank you to Maura Morrison for using such a huge medium to promote indigenous land rights. And this one's really tiny. I don't know. I don't know how to make a bear. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can click on the actual. Oh, I, I guess I can read it, but... Anyways, the links will be in the description. I'll just get to read it, but it's so tiny. My head is so full right now, I can't even form coherent thought, thoughts, but I just need to express how phenomenal it it was to see a Maori actor play a character inspired by Polynesian culture and then see, then use that character to discuss sacred land and indigenous rights. It's so rare to get any form of Polynesian representation. And for Chamora to provide larger representation and to make specific representation to the Maori Polynesian branch is just, I can't even speak. Because Polynesia is so big and very culturally similar. Most writers or production teams would simply use the surface value. But there are specific memory of elements woven into the show. Boba's staff based on a Taiaha. I really hope I'm not I'm not butchering that, but I probably am. Traditional carving methods are referenced in the creation and obviously the haka at the end of the show is just phenomenal to see a show go beyond the surface level and represent things that aren't normally in American media. And I know we owe it all to Tamora. When the Mandalorian came out, he mentioned how he asked for these elements to be included. He pushed for those cultural elements and a representation, and I just, no words, just phenomenal. Uh, the next Queen Brea Organa says, post says, to hear a Polynesian actor of the Maori branch say, you shouldn't have to hide. You are warriors. I will never be able to express what this line means to me as a Polynesian. I will never be able to express how deeply that resonated with me. Just a phenomenal performance from Tamora. I will never be able to thank him enough for that. It finally fi feels like Star Wars is for people like me. And like, I don't, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm very emotional right now. These, I, I did go through and reblog these, I think, um, like later on the blog individually, but this is just like a mass post of indigenous voices, um, responding to that when and on. Truthfully, being indigenous and watching the tribes of Tatooine, I got so emotional watching Boba learn the Tuscans' culture and help them protect their homeland from colonizers taking advantage of them. The way they turn in turn taught him about their culture and welcomed him into their community. The scene at the end with all the Tuscans and Boba performing that dance with the gaffy sticks around the fire with the soft respectful, respectful music. I was crying so so much. They handled the storyline so well and I'm so glad that this is the future of Star Wars being led by a Maori man in the leading role and being a part of one of the indigenous groups that inspired the Tuscans. It made it even more meaningful to see the Tuscan culture respected and valued and treated as something diverse and rich. God damn, Star Wars can be for us. Oh, this is by Grogu Jarring. Okay. Now, um, I'm going back to the actual post, but um, the way that's reblogged onto my blog is kind of... Okay, so this is... That was from 
those screen caps um, were collected by Revenge of the Shit. Then this next commentary that I'm gonna be make reading is from Mask the Knife. He, they, I'm sorry, I don't know their pronouns. They had uh, a post copied onto that collection. Um, by Revenge of the Shit at the very top. So, something can't be mighty whitey if none of the equation are white. Bless you for putting all those pieces together. Some I haven't seen and am so insanely happy to know so many other pe indigenous people feel the same way I have. Missing all the indigenous themes and parts of the episode doesn't mean they weren't there. It just means you didn't catch them. Also, the point of him joining the people wasn't for his ego or for a white savior complex moment, but to just show how much of a, an emotional, smart, cultured, and important people like the Tuscans are. It wasn't a plot device for him, but an opportunity to give the Tuscan peoples their own agency and to humanize them as people, which is insanely important. Star Wars takes a lot of POC inspirations for its world building. I saw a great post talking about how well Japanese culture and animation merges with Star Wars and the show's visions exactly because so much of the Star Wars is taken from that culture. To properly showcase and give credit to the taking of these themes is important, especially since it was done on purpose and pushed to happen by Tamura himself. His own culture is literally being showcased in the episode, which, as OP said, is not white. Star Wars is meant to show the rebels and goodness of humanity. Light versus dark, and a lot of that is taken from POC cultures. To give it proper, whole chested, purposeful light and credit will mean the world to POC view viewers. So many brown and black children will grow up seeing this, and that means more than the world. Exactly as I said above, Star Wars can be for us. And then there's the next commentary is from Notebookish Type. I think people are feeling the mighty whitey vibe because the episode heavily draws from Lawrence of Arabia, which is which is the embodiment of that trope, but agreed that without a white person, I don't think it's the same, like, at all. To say Boba is human, since humans are in charge and oppressed non-humans, is definitely missing the fact that Star Wars doesn't exist in a vacuum. I'm clicking on the link that um, they included on the words because the episode heavily draws from Lawrence of Arabia. Um, now, I this is my first time reading it, so I'm just going to take a second to read it out. Okay. The Book of Boba Fett, episode 2, includes the scene of the famed bounty hunter leading the Tuscan Raidens in an attack on a train, and it bears a striking resemblance to another iconic scene from a classic movie. Now... Streaming on Disney Plus, The Book of Boba Fett is the second live-action Star Wars series following the success of The Mandalorian. Spinning out of that show, it follows Boba Fett as he attempts to take control of Jabba the Hutt's criminal empire, also, with, uh, also featuring flashbacks to Fett's days among the Tuscan Raiders after escaping the Sarlacc pit. Okay, um... Okay, now this... I, I really appreciate this because it says Star Wars is no tr stranger to borrowing from other works while coming up with I with his idea for his space opera. First look has found inspiration in everything from Flash Jordan serials to the samurai films of Akira Kurosawa. The 1962 film Lawrence of Arabia directed by David Lean and starting Peter O'Toole was also a big influence on Lucas when creating the Star Wars universe, especially when it came to the desert world of Tatooine. Based on true events, but with a healthy dose of Hollywood embellishment, Lawrence of Arabia tells the story of a British T.E. Lawrence's time working alongside Arab tribes during World War I, helping them in their fight against the Turks. With the Book of Boba Fett returning to Tatooine, the indelible mark of Lawrence of Arabia returns as well. But rather than simply copying the iconic film's cinematography and landscapes, the Book of Boba Fett is recreating Entire scenes with the Star Wars twist. <sighs> okay. I'm not going to read that because... Not the whole thing. Okay. This is the important part. I'm going to highlight it. Just as the book of... Just as in the Book of Boba Fett, the Arabs' attack on the train is meant to establish them as a force in control of their own lands. Something that they had hopes of achieving with the help of Lawrence and the British Empire. 
Sadly, Britain and its allies had other plans for the lands of Arabia post-World War I, but Lawrence's time among the Arab tribes became legendary all the same, much in the same way Fett's legend is born among the Tuscans. Okay, I'm... You could read this. This isn't as important to me because this is more um, film studies type of stuff, like what influences what. To me, what's most important is that Tamar Morrison, an indigenous Maori man, influenced this um, episode so intensely and that indigenous people, not just Maori fans, but um, indigenous people all over the world are finding um, connection with Tamora's influence on the show. And I'm just going to read this last post and then I'm going to cut it short because this is running kind of long. It's like 16 minutes now. Um, last, uh, Mask the Knife answered um, notebookish type. And said, also as an indigenous person, I don't like the thought process of any story where somebody actually helps indigenous people is inherently this story and it is bad and should never be done. That puts a bad text on my mouth. You can't never write stories aiding indigenous people, but the intent and reasons absolutely matter and need to be kept in mind. Also, at this narrative is literally being taken over completely by indigenous people to any of those colonial themes are literally gone. Another person in replies added good commentary on Boba also being a marginalized person as well. Uh, let me see if I can find that one. I think it's this one. Take a while, why don't you? Okay, um, this is by Cameo Almalthea at Tumblr.com. Um, the question is this, does casting an indigenous actor as an outsider from more advanced societies subvert retelling the mighty whitey story trope? Star Wars has always reimagined genre in space, including Western in space, with the unfortunate implication that the Tuscan Raiders are a stand-in for racist depictions of Native Americans threatening the peaceful pioneer settlers. This reading makes a storyline where the indigenous people kidnap Anakin's mother and he slaughters the village after failing to rescue them and calls them animals seem really problematic. Even though what Anakin did was framed as wrong, we weren't supposed to question that the Tuscan Raiders were really the bad guys. So it's good that Star Wars has moved away from the indigenous uncivilized natives into a nuanced approach of the Tuscans as indigenous people surviving when their land has been colonized by the outsiders. Watching with my partner, them, why, what, they're just going to shoot at innocent people and animals from a train going by? Me. Oh, damn it. Sarcastically. Who ever heard of just shooting large animals, indigenous people? Depend on by train just to hurt the native population and also slaughtering innocent indigenous people. For non-Americans, white Americans <sighs> massacred buffalo by shooting them from the trains and letting them rot as part of a genocide effort against the peoples that depended on the buffalo. Them. Oh, recognition. I think it's good to tell that story rather than rehashing the old Western evil band of raiding natives to be reminded of that of what actually happened. But does that make the Dances with Wolves vibes, Dances with Massifs, okay? The train raiding scene literally recreated Lords of Arabia, and while Dances with Wolves humanized as opposed to demonizing Native Americans, the mighty whitey trope still puts the focus of stories about indigenous people on the non-indigenous character. They exist to help the non-indigenous person grow, and the non-indigenous person then saves them. And it does... And does it really change the dynamic of the non-indigenous person? Is this story is played by an indigenous actor, indigenous actor if the trope, if it's the trope that's the issue? Well, they're not really. I think they're they're meaning to do. Um, I hadn't seen this one, 
I just clicked on it because I was looking for the for the other one. But I think it matters a lot that Tamora Morrison is not white. That he's Maori, that he's indigenous, that his um that he's informing I mean I don't necessarily believe in death of the author in a lot of cases because like she who must not be named she's only making money every time people um watch her stuff or you know like even write fanfic of her stuff where is this person oh sorry more notes okay so let me see let me see let me see let me see Okay. Oh my god, how many hours are there? So I... Oh, I think this might be it. Okay. This is by Wookie Dork. Um, holy crap, this is a mess. Okay, let's see if we can. All right, this is a Wuku Dork. I read there. There's down here. Hopefully, you can see it. Okay, should go with this set of replies too, but Boba Fett experiences discrimination in the universe as well. He is someone that we see receive bigoted comments from Bo Katan, and that's not even counting what he must have had to deal with for having the same face as the clone troopers. No wonder he never removed his helmet in the original trilogy er era. His ancestral home, Mandalore, has been taken over by people that have rejected non white people. I mean this literally, by the way, if you haven't seen that arc. Of Clone Wars. He was born after this takeover and couldn't go back even if he wanted to. He has been where the Tuscans are now and he and has decided that going to give them the chance and his father, that he's going to give them the chance that he and his father never had. So, I mean, his whole thread's only like 227 notes in. I would really hope that people, in fact, I'm going to reblog this one to our blog. I would really hope people, um, like, pay attention to indigenous voices on this, because I did get a comment, um, I did get a comment, sorry, sorry, okay, here's the comment that I got on my last video <sighs> by Raven Deadeye. Uh, the only thing that is holding me back from absolutely loving the book of Boba Fett is my concern that the mighty whitey plotline in the show and the Mandalorian and the cow cowboy settler themes in the main Star Wars movies. They even made Tamora Morrison physically white for the duration of the plotline by bleaching him in stomach acid and dressing him in white underclothes. I was glad to see Tamora healed in the back to tank. What are your thoughts? I'm still trying to process. Okay, there's a reason I went through and reread all of those for you guys, even though you guys can clearly um, click on the links that I'm going to provide. I assume that a lot of people are not going to click on the links. That's why I wanted to, because it's Tumblr and it can be a little bit difficult. Um as for bleaching him in stomach acid, it's sand. It's like, yeah, he's been bleached. He's got like chemical burns on him from the stomach acid and the sand is sticking to that. But, um, like you can definitely tell like that it's sand sticking on him and it's not that they bleach him white it's it's the sand on him so i mean and plus everybody looks lighter under the direct sunlight than they really are 
and normal rooms, you know? I mean, but I think maybe the fact that he's wearing his flight suit and the flight suit that was left under his armor might also be, you know, like dressing him in white underclothes. That's, that's his flight suit that, um, that you're talking about. And I want to make one thing very clear. Um, like later on, we see Boba Fett in a mixture of the Tuscan clothing and the, the Mandalorian armor of his father, Jango Fett. So he's like become part of that culture. And there's that whole scene where he's getting the, um, he's being dressed as a Tuscan and they're wrapping him in bandages and, and yeah, he, they don't have back to tanks to heal him yet. And he's gonna, he's gonna have the back to tanks later, but, um, it was healing too, because he was like the, the whole flight suit, um, type of situation where he was basically, in, I call them Jennings and my sister said that that was rude because I was making fun of it. But, um, like it's, they're not jammies They're It's a flight suit and it is made to protect him, but his armor armor was gone, was missing. And I feel like when they dressed him as a Tuscan, that he was accepted into an, into a tribe and for years he's just been alone forgotten son of mandalore because they he he'd literally been his father had no longer been welcome on mandalore so uh, like with going along with that commentary about how that arc in clone wars um mentioned was mentioned so i mean it's really not the mighty whitey trope. If there is no white people in the equation is my answer. And yes, that it does have settler colonial cowboy themes. But one thing that a lot of people seem to like forget when they talk about, um, settler and cowboy themes is that, um, Cowboys and settlers are different. Um, maybe I can do a whole video on this later to like talk about the whole whitewashing of cowboys, but cowboys in general um, were people were men of color. They were Mexican, indigenous, black. They were not like your John Wayne types all blonde and they weren't blonde and blue eyed like Clint Eastwood most of the time they worked for landowners but um they were not generally landowners themselves they were not rich but the settlers are were basically the white people and there was not a lot of settling into the west at least in in the U.S., there was not a lot of settling into the West as um, a, an Indigenous person or a Black person without, like, significant, like, they were an anomaly more, you know, like, they, they ended up taking the roles of cowboys instead of, um, I would say that cowboys, to, to equate cowboys and settlers on the same sort of colonizing influence would be wrong. But um, I will do more research on that and try to see if I can come up with a better response for that. It does have um, I know I know that it can be conflated, the cowboys and settler themes. I'm just looking at the thing again. Here, I'll put it up again. Um, I know it can seem conflated because it seems like, oh, it's all one thing. It's They're just... Cowboys and settlers are the same thing because they're all white. No, they weren't all white. And it's, we have to respect the nuance in the situation because 
to think that they were all white, you erase a lot of people. And a lot of the reasons they were even called cowboys, they weren't respected because they were called boys because they were black and indigenous and Mexican. And they were not considered full citizens. You see what I'm saying? Anyways, um, thank you for watching. This got really long. This is 30 minutes now. Um, please leave your comments here and at my blog at leashdreams.tumblr.com. Also, if you want to leave something on and on, um, you can go ahead and do that on my blog or Star Wars Fandom Hates People of Color. Uh, yeah, like this. Yeah, just um, thanks for watching, everyone. If you like it, hit uh, like and subscribe, and you'll be notified of my next uh, video. Okay. Bye.